Hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's rocket shop where we continue working on the world's only crude crowdfunded space rocket speaker. Today we'll gather around a furnace trying to cook some rocket engine parts and tell you how and why we employ physical barriers to prevent physical phenomenons in our rocket propellant tanks. But before that let's take a quick look at some of the interesting developments that were taking place in the rocket shop today. But even before that we would like to give a quick thank you to our today's sponsor which is you. So the reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsup.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting. So now we can get back to the main episode. Overall, it was a busy and productive Saturday. Uh, we recently got a belt sander that will help speed up all the cleaning we need to do on the speaker rocket parts that come off of our CNC plasma cutter. And Jorgen was modifying a stand that will help attach the belt sander just so it can have a sturdy base and can be moved around the rocket shop easily. And we also had one future astronaut practicing manual rocket guidance on our engine gimbal. Of course, this brave little guy won't go anywhere without enough thrust coming out of that engine. And for that reason, Bo, Jakob and Scott were busy with our coaxial swirl injector soldering. You might remember from one of our previous videos that we received hundreds of machined parts from our German friends at Herring. After completing our own quality assessment on every single part, we can happily say that they came out wonderful. And we can move on to soldering nearly 80 of these injector elements that will make four different injectors for testing on our BPM-5 engine. These tests will validate the most efficient design for Spica's 100 kN BPM-100 engine, which means it is time for our final adjustments to our inert gas soldering process and start the mass production of these injectors. Hello everybody and welcome to the Copenhagen Suborbital's machine shop today. Um, we finally got these uh, swirler nozzles going now. Um, if you take a look all over the table, we have the results from all the uh, visual inspections we did during the past couple of weeks. So all of it has been given individual serial numbers, each and every part. And then we have uh, we keep full traceability on all of these parts throughout the process. So I just want to show you one of the very first results that came out of this. And that is a B-type inner swirler with serial number 393 and a, let's see, where is it? A C-type outer swirler with the serial number 282. And this one is actually the first of the swirlers that came out of this uh, wonderful cooperation we have with, uh, with Hering. Um, the Germans were so kind to help us out with uh, making all of these parts so that we can get uh, our injector technology tested and verified and right now we've gotten to the point where we need to put a lot of these uh, swirlers together i think we have some we have a few hundred parts and we need to make uh, more than 120 individual swirl elements out of this we're just verifying our uh, manufacturing and soldering technique right now but once that is all uh, done then we need to uh, leak test them we can't have any leakage between the liquid oxygen side and the fuel side then we risk something bad happening and we also need to flow characterize all of them just one individual point uh, flow uh, flow point for each of them but we need to make sure that we have full traceability on all of this and that we know the performance of each of the individual elements then we can populate our um, drop-in injectors for the bpm5 and then we can get our uh, our test going or our hot fire test. So yeah, you can hear there's a lot of stuff going on at the rocket shop these days. So we are uh, we're full at work with this. So this one is a nozzle that's been soldered already. This one is ready for soldering, and these three parts here are what makes up these individual swirlers. So they fit quite snugly. It's very nice German precision, this stuff. And when these ones have been soldered, we need to populate 19 of these into each BPM-5 injector and in excess of 200 into the BPM-100 injector. 
So all in all, this process is actually going very smoothly. And um, I mean, we just have lots and lots of swirlers to, uh, to, to put together, solder, leak test and verify. So, but I'm also sitting here with Bo, which is uh, one of the uh, ingenuity brains around making this a um, repeatable and high quality process because um, we need to streamline this somehow. We need a consistent high quality through all of this. So Bo has actually built a lot of specialized equipment just for this particular operation to make sure we get the very best quality uh, swell nozzles out of this. So, um, Bo, if you could just give us a little bit of insight to, into what, what you do with this process and which specialized tools you've come up with for this particular endeavor. Yes, um, what we do when we solder these toge together is uh, that we, on the inner part, we apply a solder paste. Uh, we have a, a small dispenser where we have the solder paste in a, in a cartridge and then it comes out of this uh, syringe. And we place uh, um, an amount of solder paste around the periphery of the, the the inner uh, part here where the lid will be placed and we place solder paste in this cavity which will uh, connect the inner part to the outer part uh, and the way we have or I have envisioned this to be easily most easily made is that we have made a I call it a swirl o uh, small apparatus here I'll just put this on so this one can rotate I'll just speed it up so you can see rotation. And then the idea is that I can uh, uh, hold my cartridge here and uh, press a foot pedal and then um, the paste will be dispensed evenly ar along the rim inside of here. And when I have a full revolution, I will remove the paste. And then I will uh, continue on the cavity that connects the outer and the inner part of the swirl. I'll just turn it so you can see it. Um, I will then take it down here. It makes it easier for me normally. But then I will apply paste uh, while the swirl is rotating. And I can uh, adjust the speed and the pressure in the dispenser to to uh, lay down a, a, uh, an amount of paste that I find suitable and when I have a full revolution then I'll turn off the dispenser and we'll be, be done with pasta uh, application on, on the inner part and that's that's all the paste, paste that has to be um, applied to this inner part and then we can assemble the two simply by dropping it down into the outer part. We will probably have some paste, excess paste being squeezed up on top of this shoulder, but that'll be removed. And the same when we place the lid in the central part of the inner part. And I use my little stick here to press it down to have it compressed uh, sufficiently before we put it in into our soldering uh, oven or apparatus. And then just to see exactly how consistent with, with this, we have a very, very, very fine scale here. So there is a, we just weigh the parts before we um, apply solder paste, and then we weigh them afterwards. And in that way we can, we record exactly how much uh, solder paste was uh, applied to each of these nozzles. So. It's going to take a while before we get done with uh, about a hundred of these this time uh, and definitely much many much more of them in the future but um, as far as we can see this process here is going really smoothly and we can't see any blockage or stopping uh, blocks or whatever so it's just uh, getting these ones done so that we can uh, we can go make some fire again
Over at our Sea Launch Marine Department, Scott and Ufa continued to repair our recovery boat, the DSC Rib. And lastly, John made some good progress on the speaker propellant tanks, as Jakob can tell you about. We're standing here with three out of the four so close to being finished end caps, which means that we're ready within just a week maybe to start building our speaker propellant tanks. Um, the way we've done these end caps is that we basically did everything we did to the end cap, we did that and finished them. So once we actually have those finished end caps and weld them onto the cylindrical section we did with the long seam welder, then we don't really have to do anything more than the tanks are done. So there's been some uh, interest into what these things here are. It's basically like a big cross we have in the bottom of, uh, of the end cap here. And this is known as, a, as an anti-vortex baffle. Now, you know this effect from your uh, sink at home where the uh, Coriolis forces uh, ends up making a vortex around the drain in your sink. And that will happen everywhere and it just happens by itself. That's just the physics of Earth. Uh, on the other hand, that can have a rather um, a rather unwanted effect on rockets where you're trying to drain the propeller tanks. Um, because to this, uh, because it's, it's drained rather fast, uh, this vortex can actually become substantial. And you can actually end up theoretically in a situation where you still have propellant inside your tank that's basically just rotating around the circumference while the drain in the, in the middle runs dry. So these large baffles here are just designed to take the energy out of that vortex so that it drains uniformly into the, uh, to the outlet port of this tank, um, no matter what happens during the flight. So as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space.